Hello everyone and welcome to episode 46 of Retry. Today we're heading back to the Game Boy to take a look at another one of my personal favorites, Motocross Maniacs, developed by Konami and released by Ultra Games in 1990. First thing you'll notice is that there's a definite similarity between Motocross Maniacs and Excitebike. Being able to angle your bike and the similar appearance of the rider in the motorcycle in the game does kind of add that these games might be connected somehow, but they're not. The major difference between the two games is their gameplay. The single player version of Motocross Maniacs really isn't a racing game. It's more of a puzzle game. You have all these obstacles, and you have a limited number of resources and power-ups, and you have to get through them before the time runs out. The time meter on the bottom right shows you how much you have left, and by picking up the T power-up, as you see there, you can actually extend the time you have to complete the level. Other power-ups in this game include tires and an extended acceleration bar which allows you to speed up faster. But the biggest power-up in this game, and the one that you can't play it without, are those ends. That's nitrous. You can see it in the bottom right-hand corner at the very bottom. Nitrous in Motocross Maniacs is a limited resource which you can use to get through each level as quickly as possible. Although mostly useless, the jet power-up allows you to use nitrous in the air so that you can fly. Yeah, I get some cool points there, but that's pretty much it. The other bike I'm racing against is really just like a pace car, to be honest with you. It always finishes right after you. It actually cheats to catch up if you're blowing it away. And its normal acceleration is faster than yours. So it's really just to motivate you to go faster, but you can't crash into it like an Excite bike. So there's really no other purpose to it. But back to Nitrous, because I'll be honest, there are very few racing games out there that have limited resources which make completing the race impossible if you don't spend them correctly. And as you see here, there is no way to get to this upper path without the Nitrous, so you're missing out on tons of bonuses. Again, no way to get up here without using the Nitrous, so if you run out, you're just going to crash and burn. Motocross Maniacs has two single player modes with and without the shadow bike that runs along with you and one multiplayer mode where players with two Game Boys and two cartridges could race against each other. The game's eight levels each had three settings you could pick from, setting A, B, or C, but the only real difference was the amount of time given to complete each level. So fortunately if you were overwhelmed a little bit, you could actually kind of control the difficulty. With only 8 levels, as you can imagine, the difficulty ramps up pretty quick. As you progress, the game has a much greater reliance on the timing-based jumps and making sure that you can get to and reach the power-ups you need to complete the level. If you waste your nitrous and don't plan accordingly, the game's pretty punishing. This is a good example right here. I've allowed myself to completely run out of the nitrous, and I can't continue. There's no way to scroll the screen backwards, there's no way to go underneath this obstacle, I'm just stuck here until the time runs out. Here's a neat little trick for conserving some nitrous. Yeah, how about we just ignore gravity? Yeah, I was supposed to kind of do a loop to loop through there, and instead I just used the nitrous to go straight up. Maybe you can understand a little better now why I don't really consider this a racing game, and I consider it more of a puzzle or even a strategy action game. It's really because it doesn't matter if you even beat the Shadow Racer that's racing against you. You can still beat the level even if he beats you. It's all about you beating the time with the resources that you're given. One of the silly things that console and handheld games of the 90s took from arcade games was high scores and new records. I mean, seriously, what's the point? There's no way to actually save your data on this game, so it's like, hey, you're just gonna get the new world record every time, so who cares? Even though I mentioned earlier that the difficulty ramps up quickly, it kinda has to because it only has the eight levels. Don't let that dissuade you from tracking this great game down. The levels really never get too cheap, and when you beat each one, you really do get a sense of accomplishment because of the challenge involved. If you want to pick up this game, it costs a whopping 99 cents on eBay, so it's definitely worth tracking down in a secondhand store or just order one there. I will say one interesting side note though. Nintendo has already announced that their new handheld console, the Nintendo 3DS, will feature a virtual console just like the Nintendo Wii. 
This is incredible news for people that are new to classic gaming. A whole new generation of gamers is going to be reintroduced to the great Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance titles that people like me grew up on. Outstanding. Thanks for watching. For VideoGameSaga.com, this is Tony B, and I'm out. Retry? You know it.